early morning and it's the big day so sun's rising yesterday you hear it <laughs> a bunch of eggs were pipping yesterday and we had a bunch hatch last night look look Leon <gasps> look what? at my oh, holy holy wow <gasps> Wow! Oh, it's... we have a flopper. Oh, we have a flopper. He just hatched. Oh, hold on. Quick, open it. He's still got his head in there. Okay, go ahead and flip him, buddy. Gently. There you go. All right, we're going to close. It's a whole party going it on in there. It's a party going on in there. <laughs> we're we're going to get all of those eggs to hatch. Hopefully. That would be amazing. Holy cow, look at them all. So, Miss Cuckoo's eggs are black. Well... Let, we'll see, we're gonna get them out. They have a chance of being black or white because the mom is black. Oh, you're just flopping around. Oh, it's flopping around. Hold on a second, let's see if it can write itself over. It's gotta get something. There we go, good. It flopped over on its own. That's I was good. getting ready to flop it over. Yep. Wow, look at them all, it's going crazy in there. All the babies. This is gonna be just like how uh, how many chicks Justin Rose has in his little pen of his? <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have that pen like his. Yeah. Just a million chicks free ranging with water and feed. So we got to get the brooder set up, and I'm really excited about this because in addition to our new incubator that we got, we also got a new brooder, and this is our brooder. Look at that. That's like. Just wait. Hold on. You can help me. Come here. All right, so bring it over here. I don't want you to get hurt. Come on. I'll hold it for you. Right. Okay. Is that a bud? There we go. Take the strap off. All right. All right. Okay. Now you're going to just hold one one piece, all right? Because it's going to pop open. All right. So right where my hand is. There it goes. <laughs> Keep pulling. Pull it out. There you go. Grab the bottom. There we go. And Ow, it hit me boom. in the face. Collapsible, washable brooder. So it's what's cool about this is, I mean, first off, look at how big it is. It's huge. It's got a zip. It's got a, a lid. Maybe just unzip. And then you've got all that room in there. I'll share a link down below. Um, it was, I wanna say it was Fifty dollars. I can't remember. I gotta pull it up, but they come with these liners that you can put in. I'm still gonna put bedding in, but um, it's actually not that bad, and they're compostable, so you can compost this um, with any bedding that you might put in. You don't have to put bedding in. I'm gonna put bedding in just because. Um, but then I'm just like, this is so cool. So. Whereas we're, we're our, we had made a DIY incubator. Wait, would it be here? I think it would be right here. We made a DIY uh, brooder with uh, a storage tote and some hardware cloth and zip ties. And so I'll share that up here. And, um, but the problem with that is you gotta store it and that takes up space and some people don't have that much room for storage. Um, so this is actually a really awesome solution because it collapses down to this small little case. It's like, takes up nothing. And so um, I was really excited whenever I discovered that because that's not something I've seen anywhere else. Fits in there nicely. All right. Gotta get these chickies all set up gonna get the brooder heating plate that we got from tractor supply set up in there so that they can be nice and warm I've actually been very happy with this brooder heating plate um, we had a heat lamp and <clears throat> we had a recent incident the heating lamp actually blew our breaker or popped our breaker and 
the bulb blue at the same time and that terrified me like I was like okay no more no no we're not doing a heating lamp so we went and we bought this and it actually was not that bad because sometimes heating plates can be a little bit more expensive and I was a little intimidated by that so whenever I saw this one and it was actually not that badly priced I was like oh yes this is happening so something cool about this particular heating plate it's uh, by producers pride it is a zero clearance heating plate so it can does not have to have space between it and a wall you can literally it's also a good, it's a brooder and it's also a heating plate for a coupe. So you can literally put this up against the wall. You can hang it from a wall. Another cool thing is that it comes with these adjustable legs. So you can raise it up and lower it depending on what you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower it down to the lowest setting. They're new, they're fresh, they're tiny. We wanna make sure that they are plenty warm. So you just basically pull it out and slide it in. Whoops, I can do this with one hand. I don't think I can do this with one hand. I'm not that talented. There we go. All right, I'm gonna slide this right here so that it is up against the wall. And they have a little area to go under. And then we're gonna set up their food and water over there. Oh shoot, I forgot to put the bedding in. Okay, I got some of the bedding in there. Just a light layer, nothing too heavy. And then but I figured it's a little chilly still, and then we got the brooder set up in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get them in. Nian, you wanna help me get those eggs and these, these chicks in? Um, Let's go yeah. ahead. Because we have a whole party going on mm -hmm. in there, we might as well get some out. Yeah, we want to do it quickly too. We don't want to leave the lid open too long. All right, so let's see what the what the therm what the humidity. Okay, humidity is at 75. Okay, we've got the humidity high enough. I don't feel as worried. All right, go ahead and grab the chicks. Just grab a couple at a time. All right. We'll get them under the brooder. Let them get warmed up and then we will go through and pick out who all because they are pretty easily to distinguish apart. But let's see how many eggs we have left. All right, this egg hasn't. Ah, there we go. We have a pick right here. That's good. This egg. Oh, this egg's picked. This egg's nothing. This nothing's happened with this one. This one's hatching. This one's hatching. This one picked. I don't know if that one's still going. This one, this one's picked. This one's picked. Picked. This one's picked. And this one's picked. All right, awesome. That's all, awesome, oh my goodness. Unfortunately, we did have one uh, cuckoo moran egg that had pipped yesterday, but it pipped at the wrong end, which we did have some of them pipped at the pointy end instead of the rounded end. Whenever chicks pip, they're supposed to point at the pip at the rounded end. Um, now, that doesn't mean that they're gonna immediately, like they're not gonna hatch. Um, we have had, we had a few, quite a few of the cuckoo moran eggs that pipped at the pointy end and they hatched okay. Um, so far we've got two cuckoo moran uh, Americana crop. Well, I guess they're gonna be the olive eggers. They're supposed to be olive eggers, but the cu cu Miss Cuckoo's eggs, we have two that have actually fully hatched, and I'll show you guys those here in a bit, um, let letting them warm up. But um, we've got, we might actually get almost all of them that took to hatch. That would be amazing. Like, that would be amazing. And definitely a testament to this incubator and also I think the big thing that helped was the humidity tip that I had come across um, that you might have heard about in my last video if you want to see that here I'll link that here in my last video I talked about a tip that I had read on humidity um, go there and 
learn that and read the article on that definitely I think was a huge help and uh, definitely increased our hatch rate because we might actually get all of them that took to hatch. I've never had a 100% hatch rate, which I guess it technically wouldn't be a 100% hatch rate because we did have some eggs that didn't take. So, I mean, we'll see. Now that I, this was kind of an experimental hatching and was a, it's obviously a huge success. I mean, you saw how many babies we've got. So we're gonna let them warm up in here in a, here in a bit. I'll show you guys all of the babies. So one of the best things that you can do for chicks starting out is give them uh, supplements in their food and water that's gonna really boost their immune system, their give them, them that beneficial bacteria in their gut, and just really help uh, encourage a overall healthy chick. So you don't have to do this, but I personally do this and it has, I have not lost a chick. Like it's very common. Uh, for you to buy chicks and they die it happens But this has definitely been something that I've since since I've implemented we never lose any chicks Knock on wood, of course. So first thing I do is um, Apple cider vinegar with the mother. I always add uh, a splash of it to their water uh, Because it is raw and unfiltered uh, it's fermented in a sense. There's 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 beneficial bacteria like you would uh, probiotics like if you were to eat yogurt. Um, I don't know vali the validity of this, but I do also hear that because of the slight acidic nature of the apple cider vinegar, it helps um, it helps minimize the risk of uh, like coccidia. I don't know if that's true. That's just what I've heard. But I do know that apple cider vinegar with the mother, the raw organic, raw and filtered apple cider vinegar with the mother um, has beneficial probiotics in it. So I always add a splash of that to their water and that helps tremendously. Just a splash. There we go. And then, get that out. some water for them. Something else that I do um, just as an extra, just to give them as much of a boost as I possibly can. Um, you don't have to do this. It's just something that I personally do, but I thought I would share is I have an old coffee grinder and I take the chick feed um, for the, just the, really just the first batch. Um, because it, the first batch of chick feed is going to last them a while in their feeder. You want to always provide them with free choice food. I always have free choice for the chicks until they're pretty much moved out to the chicken coop. I think I, I usually provide free choice up till six months. Um, you don't have to. It's everyone's personal prerogative. But um, what I do for at least the first uh, feeding, first full feeder. So I'll take an old coffee grinder, chick feed, and cinnamon. I like to add cinnamon to at least the first feeding, um, mainly because cinnamon has a lot of antibacterial properties naturally. I can't think of all the list of things, but cinnamon has a number of other properties, but the biggest thing is that antibacterial property that it naturally has. So I'm gonna add cinnamon to their food. Like I said, you don't have to. This is just something that I personally do and I thought I would share. Okay, I got cinnamon, I got some feed that I have, you're gonna have to do a couple passes unless you've got a larger coffee grinder, but I'm just sprinkle some, just a little bit, doesn't need to be a lot. Just give a healthy little sprinkle of cinnamon for each batch. And this is how I keep from spilling food. finely ground mixed with cinnamon. Uh, it's actually kind of smells really good, but um, where's their feeder? Ah, there's their feeder. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that mixed up and made up and then give that to them as well. And hopefully by that point, they'll be uh, warmed up enough that I can, I can look at them. Pro tip, canning funnel works to help funnel feed into chick feeders.
Oh, hi, did you guys come out? So I came over to give them their food and I think that they are, uh, they're starting to come out now. So I think they're finally warm enough. So let's go ahead. Leon, you wanna see the chicks? Sure. So we've got, so these ones are the Americanas. See how they're light? Mm -hmm. This one's a little darker though. Maybe that one's the silky. No, this, this one's, cause the silky is are half the size of the others. So Did let's we get see. edgy silky hatches? Yeah, we got a lot of silky hatches. See, here's one. See this one back here? See this? See, uh -huh. see the feather legs? That is a silky. So the feather legs, so look at the size difference. Whoops. So look at the size difference. Wow. See how much smaller it is? Because it's a bantam. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi. 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 That's a bantam species. Can I go under my hand? Are you happy you're there? <laughs> that's oh, part of the bantam. Um, that's part of the um, bantam species of chicken. Uh, yes, variety. See this dark one right here? Uh huh. That one is, is Miss Cuckoo's. Miss Cuckoo's baby. Yeah. So. So they are black. Another you know another defining feature of the uh, cuckoo morans is light feathers on their feet. So you see the little the little feathers that are right there on its feet. Mm -hmm. That is another defining feature. So any of them, besides the silkies, because you can see the size difference between the silkies and the standard. So there is one other one in here that is hers, but it's not black. Yeah, so there is one in here. Let's see if we can locate it. So this one, that one's regular. Come here, sweetheart. Do you have feather legs? No. No feather legs. Watch out, watch out, here we're gonna open this up. Let's see if we can find a feather. Oh, this leg. one's pretty dark. Look at this one. Can I see? This one might be it. Look at how here. let's see this down. See how dark this one is? Mm -hmm. But it's not black. Does it have feather legs? Let's see if this is, yep, there's the feathers on the legs. So that, so you see the feathers? So that Better one. Focus. It has black on its head, feathers? but white on it on the Ooh, rest of its this body. This one's gonna be pretty. I'm excited to see what this one looks like. It's a uh, painting. Well, it might be a splash. It might be a blue. So we'll see. We're keeping these two definitely. And even this one's pretty light for being black. That doesn't quite look black. It's almost blue. So we'll have yeah. to see. I'm excited to see how ours are gonna look. Mama, they're literally like this on your eggs. Hi, cutie. Oh, you're so pretty. Look. Mama. Let's show everyone. Say hi. Say hi to the world. Mama. Yes, baby. Pretend this is the chick's um, egg. I mean, beak. Like I said, the ones from Miss Cuckoo are the ones we are keeping out of this batch. The others are getting sold. They have already, I've actually already got homes lined up for them. But the ones that Miss Cuckoo hat, uh, that are from Miss Cuckoo, we're gonna keep and raise and add to our flock so we can see how they do, what they look like fully grown, and what color eggs they produce. So we can be sure, yes, they are olive eggers and this is what they can look like. So that will be exciting. Are you guys getting plenty warm now? Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, you wanna go under? <laughs> Is that your happy place now? She went under my hand. Hi. Hi, cutie. So I'm gonna go ahead and start dipping beaks to show them where the water is. Um, that way I know that they're all drinking and basically if I get at least a few to dip their beaks, they'll show the others in a sense because the others will see what they're doing and they'll come over and they'll get their drinks. Let's well, see, I haven't even shown them food and water. They're already coming over here and pecking at this and being curious. This is good. Come here. Oh, we're trying to dip your beak. Just a little dip. All right, so basically what you want to do whenever you dip their beak is you want to see how he's doing that with his beak. That means he got a drink. 
you just want to do it enough that you see that. And we'll get one of these little silkies. Just a little dip. Get it? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Calm down. There we go. He got the drink. Hi, cutie. Come get a drink. Alright, the rest of them should follow suit. They're usually pretty quick to figure it out, though. <laughs> so it's been a few hours, and we've got more eggs hatching, and I'm really excited because I think we might actually have every egg but one hatch that was left over. Look. Look at you guys, we've got, if I can get this to where it's not reflecting. So we've got down there, that one is a little silky and then these two are two, oh, don't flop, don't you flopping. And then those two are two of Miss Cuckoo's chicks. So it's going good, we've got, we've actually got four. See, see a little peeping right there? That one. That one and those two are currently hatching. We do have one more that is right there. That one's hatching. And then that lone egg. Oh, actually we do have, we have another Americana egg hatching. And then that one egg there is, it isn't even pipped. So I don't think that one's gonna hatch. But that's still, that's a huge increase in hatch rate. So, um, I'm gonna do the numbers, look back, and then I can kind of calculate what our exact hatch rate was, including the duds. And then we did lose, unfortunately we had one chick pip yesterday, but it pipped at the wrong end, and it didn't get any further than that, unfortunately last night, and it passed away. So we do, we did have one chick that tried to hatch, but struggled and was not, it was an unsuccessful hatch. It just presented wrong, which can happen, unfortunately. But I think we've probably got like an 80 to 90% hatch rate. If we're, if we're including the, the duds. Now, if we're not including the duds, we've got a really high hatch rate because that means we only had two eggs, not hatch, out of the keepers. So I was looking at the vlog and we started out with 42 eggs. We had nine duds. Now, um, there were a few in there that had veins, but majority of them just never took at all. So, um, if you factor in from the get-go how many eggs we started versus how many hatched, we have a 73% hatch rate, which is very good. Um, but if you don't include those nine duds, we've got like a 93% hatch rate. So um, I'd say probably about 80 to 85% hatch rate because some of those duds did start to form veins and they terminated later on. So I'd say about 80 to 85% hatch rate, which is amazing. I'm very happy with that. We're still waiting on the last of the batch to hatch. We got one, he's getting there, he's working on it. He's really trying. These have kind of paused, but they're still going, so I'm gonna let them do their thing. Keeping the humidity at 75%, so it's good and high. We don't want them to dry out. You wanna keep that humidity high, um, especially if you're opening the incubator to take chicks out. We decided, because so many of them had hatched, we decided it would be best to go ahead and take them out, just so they're not moving around, rolling over the eggs that are still in the process of hatching. Let's see so how they're that doing. Now them break and then we don't get any chicks from those eggs. Well, just because I'm afraid, and this might be this might be an invalid concern, but I'm afraid that in the chicks moving around and rolling the eggs over, it could mess up the chicks' presentation and make it more difficult for them to hatch. That might not be a valid concern. But that's just something I'm a little worried about whenever you start to get a lot of them in there and they're kind of moshing around and rolling everything up. Look at you guys. You guys are all warm in here, aren't you? Hi, guys. Look at all of these biddies. What, what are you doing back there? Go under. I don't want to. 
Go on. Go under there. Go under there. Look at all these bitties. So many bitties. Careful. Babies. It's hot. It's very hot. It is hot, but it's not that bad. I can touch it. So we've got some of the fresh hatches. We had a couple more of Miss Cuckoo's hatch, and I'm really excited because they came out light like the other one that looks like it could possibly be a, uh, a splash or um, a blue colored olive agar. So let's see if we can see if they're dried out yet. Uh, oh, hi, sweetheart. Oh, look at them. I'll show you guys. So just to kind of show you guys, so this one is one of Miss Cuckoo's. And so this is this is the other one of Miss Cuckoo's that is not quite black. See, like this one? That one's much more black. That one's more likely to look like its mom. But this one, this one looks like it could be a splash. I am excited to see how this one looks whenever it's fully grown. It's gonna be gorgeous. Are you gonna be a little hen? Are you a little hen? I hope you are. We wanna keep you. Hi, gorgeous. Hi. Oh. Are you curious? I see you coming over here. You're curious, aren't you? Yeah. Unfortunately, they will not be staying here. Um, Miss Cuckoo's chicks we will be keeping, but the others, I'm actually already getting homes lined up for them. I've got an extensive waiting list for Splash Americanas and Bearded Silkies. Um, so already four of the Silkies have a home they're going to tomorrow. I've still got to call the waiting list, so. But, like I said in previous vlogs, we are planning on keeping Miss Cuckoo's chicks and documenting their growth, seeing how they look as adults, seeing what color eggs they lay. So, in six months from today, we will know what, whether they are truly olive eggers. It's nighttime now, and more of those eggs had hatched, and we were down to two that were struggling, and then the one egg that had not pipped at all and the one egg pipped, and the last two, they had kind of gotten stuck in their eggs, so I had to assist them, but they hatched, and they are doing good. They're actually still in here. Let me see if I can show them to you guys. So we've got that one right there. He's resting, and then the little Silky right here is getting around. Little babies, there you go. You made it out. It's another one of Miss Cuckoo's chicks. So, and then the last of Miss Cuckoo's chicks, it pipped. There's a little pip right at the at the end. So thankfully that one pipped. So hopefully tomorrow morning it will have made progress and it will be hatched or hatching. We'll see.